It was meant to be a new venture of higher learning in Wales. Quite a few of the first years are considering not coming back next year just because of the bad experience they've had so far. We don't get our essays back at all on time. This is our third and final year. This is our last chance to make a change to our grades and get a decent job. And I think that they've really messed around with that at times. On tonight's programme, we're going to be taking a close look at the atrium and exactly how it all went wrong. With a £35 million investment, the atrium here in Cardiff was meant to be a fantastic new experience for students. With brand new facilities and state-of-the-art equipment, it was set to be one of the leading universities here in the UK for creative and cultural industries. So it's not surprising that when the atrium first opened its doors in September 2007, that students flooded in from all over the UK to come to a specific building and engage in a new and exciting form of study. However, when the atrium opened its doors and students got a closer look, they found that they were less than impressed. This was the harsh reality that faced students when they first arrived at the atrium in September. What was meant to be their dream university and their home for the next three years turned out to be a nightmare. All that surrounded them was a construction site, a prison and a sea of fluorescent yellow. I was very shocked to turn up to find it was still a building site and being wolf whistled out while walking in on a rainy day was not what I anticipated when I first turned up. It was, we were told that it would be this big high tech new building, which in some aspects it is now, but when we turned up it was still a building site. It was hardly the state of the art university that they were promised, but with no communication about what was going on or when the building would be finished, the marquee, it was a social area, staff room, freshest there, restaurant and it seems the only salvation from the chaos that was the atrium but then it also soon became their classroom because the building wasn't finished students were subjected to having their classes in the marquee which is not designed to be used in winter and at times is threatened to be blown away by the fierce weather this small shop soon became the best part of the students' lives. It gave them everything they needed and also held the only piece of technical equipment that was working, which happened to be the free tea and coffee machine. As only half the building was up and running, the library was the only other sanctuary for the students and the main computer lab, although this was having problems of its own. With half its stock on the Trafaris campus, the printers not working, it seemed that nothing was going right for the atrium so far. We met up with Emily Holmden, the non-sabbatical officer for Cardiff, to try and find out what was going on. What particular problems have occurred since the move to the atrium? I think the main problems have been uh, that we all, were, everyone was put into workspaces that weren't designed specifically for their module or their subject they were studying. Um, also that the library wasn't stocked yet. Um, other things as well, such as just equipment it was mainly equipment not being ready that we couldn't move in, also that the building wasn't finished, so we couldn't come in because of that. Um, and other problems were stuff like the air conditioning, and um, we had a marquee for a cafe and just things like that. So how have the students suffered in their education? Um, I think a lot of students have suffered just because they didn't have, again, they didn't have the facilities that they needed to complete it. Um, the lecturers, were, everyone was, there was such, such bad communication going on. People didn't know who to talk to if they had a problem. Um, they didn't know when modules would finish or start or if they'd been postponed. Um, and I think just the quality of teaching went down because people were, were in spaces that weren't suited to them. Some students have even gone so far as to voice their disappointment about the atrium on Facebook, which is a social networking site. This group in particular is about wanting to have a bar on campus here at the atrium. Students are also complaining about the facilities, stating that the new cinema room is constantly leaking, the seats are too small and not designed to be academically functional. A strong view is that the atrium is being run and designed more like a business than a place of academic learning. The student union is vital to a student's way of life here at university as it caters to specific needs and looks after them from their social life, educational issues to personal needs. Most students who come to uni have just left school. The student union is a great place to help them branch out and meet new people in a safe environment. 
It is always patrolled by security and filled with staff waiting to help. And if students want to go clubbing, they can do so with a sense of freedom and security. This is a major part of the university life as it helps develop their confidence and creates a home away from home. However, here at the atrium, there is only one representative for the entire student union who sits behind this desk. The student union representative doesn't even have a phone. So if someone wants to contact the SU, they have to leave the desk unmanned and go into their office, which is in a student restricted area. Apparently, the atrium allocated the student union another office behind the reception desk, although these spaces are all taken. The student union did request this one, but were denied. It was given instead to student money services, but they only use it on a Tuesday and Friday afternoon. Do you think oh, they may move the students too soon? Yes, I do. I think I should have moved the students this coming academic year and not the one just passed. Did the student union advise not to move or to delay the move to after Christmas for the atrium? No, the student union were fully aware of when we're moving and how we'd move. And they didn't advise to delay the move? It wouldn't have. No, it wouldn't have mattered really, yeah. Because okay, just because um, I heard that parents' union did advise to move after Christmas or the next academic year and to keep the students in for some working facilities. That's never been under discussion with myself or any of the project managers. No. We had open discussions with student union. There was never any possibility of delaying the move. Because it was ne so it was in April when you discussed the move. We discussed that. There was a drop dead date for any building to move because we have to decommission. Um, studios, the radio station, uh, the design studios, the music studios, that all had to be decided around April. And when we did that, everyone was consulted, that's the decision. Um, it's a no-go after that. We spoke to the student union who stated that last April they did advise to delay the move to the following academic year. This is because when they visited the building in the summer, they were very concerned as it was in this condition and knew that it wouldn't be ready in time. What's the contrast in life for the students um, from Trafaris to the atrium? I'd say that there is a massive difference between student life, campus-based student life, and then um, students scattered around Cardiff. I think that um, a lot of problems have come because people don't have a social area they could just meet in, especially from the, for the first term. There wasn't somewhere that everyone could just go to to mingle with other people. The first year students, um, things were set up for them, but only during Freshers' Week. There wasn't really anywhere they could know to go and they'd meet someone on their course. So the first year students haven't had what the second and third years have had socially? No, they haven't had the same social depth that we've all, that this, well, myself and the second years will have had into Forest with the union very, very close to what they were doing, you know.